How's it going, everyone? It is Tuesday, July 9th, 2024. Let's get into the video. Yesterday, I gave a pick SMCI on a pullback. So here's how I traded that stock. Um, I got in over here on this LSR pullback at 9.13. Uh, I took some profits, 9.18-ish, and it wasn't the best trade. And uh, it wasn't the best trade for, well, it was a decent trade, but it wasn't the best exit for a couple of reasons. The first was that I entered this stock, and there's still maybe, uh, you know, 50 minutes to go, but I felt pretty decent at the time. I was getting some relative strength at a half position on. Uh, the stock had a weakish close, so I didn't add to the position. And um, I didn't exactly feel like, I, th I thought we could go higher than we actually did, um, rather than test this position here. But my original game plan was to stick with SMCI all the way up until maybe something like 972. But I just didn't have conviction in that game plan to actually stick through it. So this is sort of a mental challenge or a mental mistake on my part. My two options should have been one, take profits uh, at this relative high here at 926, or be prepared to weather a little bit of storm and take profits um, and kind of stick with your original thesis and move up. So um, I had a game plan, but I didn't quite stick to that game plan because I didn't have the market conviction to stick to that game plan. But um, there, were, there was a mental aspect to this. So I took a small win, but um, in reality, um, SMCI, it wasn't because the trade was bad, it's because I just didn't have a lot of confidence in the trade, and I just didn't have a lot of confidence uh, yesterday. And I want to talk about that a little bit before we get into AMD, because that's going to relate into AMD. But uh, yesterday, I, you know, probably wasn't in the best, you know, maybe didn't get the best lead, didn't get the best mind state, wasn't as um, dialed in for my trading. So I took one loss on Para. I took a Para short uh, yesterday on Paramount, and um, you know, actually, I could have scratching out later in the day, but I want to show you guys how I did. So I liked Paramount here. Um, I took it short early in the day, thinking that we could get some follow through pretty quickly. Um, we got this really high volume Doji, which I was scared of, but I didn't exactly do anything about. And then I ended up taking the loss somewhere here at 11.55. Um, so you can see that one, not the ideal entry, but I still knew the warning signs. Two, I didn't get the ideal entry. I ignored the warning signs um, because I wanted to make money. And then, you know, it got kind of snap. It pulled back and you can see how we broke through this SMA, came back for the retest. So I was kind of, you know, I was trading in spite of that. It wasn't being as nimble as I should have. Uh, stock ended up hitting my scratch target later in the day. Um, but I just didn't have the conviction. I played this trade really poorly. So that had kind of shook my confidence a little bit, um, as well as the AMD trade gone a little bit sour. It shook my confidence a little bit as well. So just wasn't in the best state of mind. Now, um, that's that lack of confidence is why I actually took the uh, not, I took a win, but a very tiny win on SMC. I took like three bucks on this stock. And this stock is like a look. This is a $57 mover. So three bucks is nothing on a stock like this. But I took three bucks. Um, but I just, I felt when I saw this candle and it was a long red candle, my first thought was reversal, 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 reversal. Get out of the trade. It's going reverse. You're going to lose a lot of money. And that was just not right. That's just a wrong prediction. And that's based on emotion. My risk, my my emotional um profile was not tuned to what the price action was doing and that's why i ended up taking a smaller loss so um since i'm kind of in this a little bit of a confidence rut um i need to win it back and how i do that is i really 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 focus on making the next trade as good as possible so try to get as, as precise of an entry as i can as clear of a game plan that i have so Here's an example here. Um, I took Lulu short, uh, about 288.48. Um, it's looking pretty good, but I have a scenario here. This stock could be time stopped out. So I took it here, 1055. It's not really doing a whole lot. Market is rallying a little bit, but the stock isn't doing much. So um, 
you know, I'm going to time stop out of this trade uh, probably around right now. Um, but I felt way more confident taking Lulu on this D1 chart, on this M5 chart. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of waiting for just the right setup, the right entry and a clear game plan just to get the confidence back. Um, that's kind of really the number one thing. If your confidence is gone, it really corrupts all of my other decision making. So I'm going to uh, take the small loss on Lulu, the scratch on Lulu. And um, we are going to look at AMD. Okay. So AMD. I legged out of this guy uh, at the end of day yesterday. Um, and right now, I'm really waiting to see if AM, what really AMD is going to do for today. So you can see that yesterday, um, we had this move up, pulled back a little bit, found some support, and then we rallied later in the day. And ideally, I should have taken um, this AMD entry somewhere around here, 1255, where we're kind of gaining relative strength. We're above VWAP now. We're closing above VWAP. Um, not a huge tail here. So this would have been a far better entry to leg out, and I could have I could have ridden up the profits a little bit higher. We're getting this double top. We're getting this bottoming sort of for pattern happening. But uh, I ended up taking it somewhere around here. Um, or I'm not even here, somewhere around here, closer to the end of the day. And I need about probably three bucks on the stock to break even. So I got this candle here, and then I got this bearish hammer uh, on some decent volume, not as high volume, but some decent volume uh, coming back down over here. Now the stock is a, uh, it get kind of pulled back here, formed a little bearish, a, a bullish hammer on almost the highest volume of the day, pretty close to the highest volume. That's this level, came back over here, that's this level again. Um, so it's just kind of in this bottoming out process, pulling back. So my plan is on AMD to uh, take my win on the retest of this high, and it'll be a smaller win than I'd like, but on this call credit spread since we legged out, one, I didn't have the best leg out, and then two, I am not very confident about the market. And then three, I'm just looking to get a better loss at this point. Instead of taking a max loss, which would be if you're doing one contract, be $400. Um, if I can take a, if I leg out and then I take a win on here, I can cut that to $100 or $200. So that's way better than the max loss scenario that I might see. So that's the plan with AMD right now. Um, we'll see how this plays out later in the day. That is what we are watching for. So let's take a look at the market on a longer term time frame. We're still mildly bullish. Again, uh, we have some earnings coming out uh, this week. Um, we have CPI coming out, I believe, on Thursday. Let's ch double check the market view here. Yep, CPI on Thursday, PPI on Friday. Bank earnings coming up. Um, this week as well. So that's sort of the first round of news. You can see that the market has had a light volume rally up. Um, and to me, it really seems like we're at the end stages uh, of that rally again. Um, we had the move up. Now we're getting these tiny, bod tiny bodied compressed candles. They might last a couple of days before we get that move lower. Um, but there's also some optimism into earnings season. So it's it's kind of an interesting point, I think, for swing trading because I don't really have the confidence to take many swing longs because it's a light volume rally and I don't want to be chasing at the end of the rally. But I also don't have the confidence to quite short because we're still going up higher. So it really does feel like day trades um, are your best bet or you could probably get in this rally you know, selling some premium, uh, maybe favoring the long side a little bit more. But... Uh, again, you just want to be very, very light because we're just waiting for that dip to uh, come out. So um, that's what I'm personally waiting for. But this float higher, I think it lasted a little bit longer than people had suspected. Uh, and I certainly didn't believe we'd make a new all-time high uh, after the 28th, but I was proven wrong with this sort of rally. So how can we take advantage of this? Um, we had a pretty low... You know, this is equal volume to this day, but 
no movement really. Um, if we take a look at the M30 chart a little bit here, let's zoom out. So we had this nice rally starting to wane a little bit, gap up, test the test the fill, or, or sorry, gap up, fill in the gap. Uh, we kind of hold this level here, gap up again a little bit uh, shorter here. Um, don't quite fill in the gap or holding the level. You can see that there is some weakness coming in now. So if you don't want to be, you want to be late, you don't want to be late to this move joining in um, uh, on this move, right? If you're like, oh man, I still want to get long. The market's still looking good. This is where you're going to get flushed out. You got to get in way earlier uh, on a move like this. And if you didn't, you just got to let it go. So we're compressing a little bit, which tells us that we're close to the end, end stage of the rally. We might be even be getting that pullback phase here. So we'd want to see if we can actually get through the low of 554 um, on a pullback and see if we retest this level around 550. That's what I'd be looking for. Um, and earnings may have a play over here. They may boost us up um, or they may pull us back down. I'm not really making any strong um, convictions over here, but on a short term time frame, I'm still neutral. Um, just Again, playing it very light. Don't want to overload on positions here. And going back to confidence too. If you're having low confidence, the worst thing you can do is take a whole bunch of positions to try to win, right? You want to actually get out of your positions. You want to scale out. You want to get back in with smaller size. Just build the confidence up. Be really, really uh, convicted in the trades that you take. So today, what do we have? We got SPY gapping up here. We're testing the top. Can't quite get through. Testing the bottom. Can't quite get through. This is a low volume, pretty choppy day. We're just moving sideways. So you can find opportunities on both sides. There's Lulu here breaking down. You can find opportunity on both sides. Um, so let's see if we can find a nice, relatively strong, uh, relatively strong stock, relatively weak stock over here. I called out Lulu earlier. Um, financials have been pretty strong. So I've been liking C. So C is a really nice breakout, rallying into earnings. You can see how it makes a, a pullback over here. And then you get this HA reversal. And that's a pretty decent entry point. So what I would do on C is get in on a pullback uh, off of the 8 EMA. If you get a nice long candle here off the 8 EMA, that's a pretty nice point on a stock like this. So here's a high volume doji. You can see how we actually are able to get through it. Um, so that weakness is gone. So C is pretty nice. Uh, if I look at other, other bank stocks, MS has made a pretty nice move up. Here's the D1 today. So it may be hitting a little bit of let's see resistance here. That could be a point of resistance. Yeah. You can see how MS is a pretty choppy stock. It comes back, tests over here, this AVWAP E, and then breaks out. And that breakout is a pretty nice time to get in uh, on the stock over here. See if there's any. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there's some uh, there's some high volume candles coming into play here. So that is certainly quite relevant. And then that it, that blue line is a major. Yeah, that's a major D1 level that we got to be careful of for MS. Anyways, so we're zooming out pretty far here, but yeah, MS is nice. Um, I even like I even like Goldman Sachs here. How pull back, then it hit the 8 EMA, and now it's rallying up higher. Um, some decent volume here. This is some really strong price action on the stock, just very steady buying. So, um, and you can see how we get, this is a nice reversal setup. So we got the reversal here, found some support, and then we started rallying pretty decently. Uh, we got some room until 474. So I like what I see in GS. Um, I think GS is going to be my pick of the day. This is some really beautiful price action on that stock. So I think GS is going to be my YouTube pick of the day. I'm going to add that over here as a day trade. Um, I would enter a little bit closer to this 8 EMA here, or you can wait for an HA reversal. So let's create an HA reversal alert. Um, and let's see if we can hold this level here. But if we do, I think we can test uh, that 475 level 
Uh, I think we got some room until there for sure. There's that earnings optimism into play. This is some beautiful price action, good volume on this price action as well. Very organized buying. So that's what we like to see. Um, now on the short side, um, I did just talk about Lulu. So let's see if we can find anything else that is pretty weak. Let's go to our grinder search. See what's on relatively weak. I got to take out the sector filter. That's why. Okay, so we have Lulu, Starbucks. Starbucks is a nice one as well. Yeah, the stock is now starting to accelerate to the downside over here as pulling away from the 8 EMA. So I think I missed my entry here. Um, but damn, that was a nice trade. UPS still has to break through. CELH was nice, um, but it's hitting this support level right here. So we need to get a C to get through that level. Um, pretty decently, we got a bounce, fail, it, it kind of failed. We retested it here again, bounce, retested it here again. Um, so I don't mind CELH. If it can get through this low, uh, we got a pretty nice, a pretty nice late day setup in our hands. So I think that's going to be my short pick. If CELH can close below this level, ideally on a key red bar, um, closing near its low key red bar, that is when I would get short uh, on this position. So right now we're pull this is a, sort of the pullback phase. We're just digesting the some of the gains, some of the buyers here. See that there's some pretty high volume bars coming up through this level. Um, but if we get sort of this descending triangle pattern here where we get these same lows but uh, lower highs, we kind of keep testing that level. That's how I know that, um, you know, sellers are going to be in control and we can probably get that next leg lower. So let's add this to our YouTube picks. Um, all right. And that is it. So. Let's summarize our current positions here. Oops, that's my wrong position. So we have AMD that we've legged out, so that's long. We're looking to get a smaller loss on a retest, making a double top. We have Goldman Sachs. A little pull back to the 8 EMA would be great. And then we have CELH if it can get through the low of the day. Our buy series at the market's not really going to do too much. So if our market bias changes, it gets pretty bullish. CELH could be off the table. If the market bias breaks, if a market breaks to the low of the day here and our bias gets a little bit more bearish, then Goldman Sachs could be off the table. So this is contingent on the fact that the market is going to be in a low probability trading environment. Thanks for watching, everyone. And we'll take a look at how these picks did in tomorrow's video.